today we'll discuss control statements uh, i just wanted to take you a glance of what you have studied before in first year right uh, in c language uh, what control statements you have studied i just wanted to uh, a tour of the same then probably we'll see uh, you know in the subsequent classes uh, the control statements that are offered by other programming languages okay so uh, i'll today discuss only regarding the c language control statements only fine so what do you mean by control statement the statements which can rather allow you to take the control from one place to another the other way around uh, the control abstraction to provide it uh, you can uh, do it with the help of this control statement right so in c language if you see this control statements can be uh, classified into uh, conditional and unconditional statements right? and unconditional statement. So under conditional statement, you may have studied if statement, if else statement, or statement, while statement, do while statement. Okay, uh, then under unconditional, like break, continue, and go to statement, right? And in addition to this, you may have studied the case control structure as well, right? Case control structure. It is said to be switch case. It is a combination of both conditional and conditional. Okay. So uh, now coming to conditional statement. For example, we take the if statement. Right. What is the syntax of if statement? If followed by the condition. Right. Then if the condition is true, rather right. Then you will have some set of statement which block. So the block you can start with begin rather right. You can have some set of statements here. Then you can say end of the block, right? End of the keep block. Then followed by you have some next statements rather right. This is how you find the syntax of if statement. If followed by condition, if the condition is true, then it is going to execute this block, right? If the condition is false, it directly comes out of the statement. But when the condition is true, it executes a block, then followed by the next statement, right? Similarly, if else statement. This is said to be the Boolean statement also, rather, right? Because you have uh, uh, you know two blocks here. If condition. If the condition is true, you're going to execute its block. We have some set of statements, begin and end. And if the condition is false, you automatically enter into the uh, next block, right? So where you have some set of statements, okay, as its block, and then you end. Then you have some uh, set of next statements followed by the same. So the working style of the if statement is uh, if the statement is if the condition is true here you're giving some kind of condition. If the condition is true, then you will execute this block, right? This is said to be the if block. And if the condition is false, we come to the else block. This is said to be the else block. Right? So when the condition is true, after executing the if block, it directly comes out of the next step. It doesn't go to the else block. When the condition is false, it comes to the else block automatically and then followed by the next statement, right? Similarly, you have if else if statement also, right? When you have multiple conditions and uh, based on the 
a set of conditions you want to execute a uh, various set of block of instructions rather right you can go for this if else statement so if you look at the syntax of the same is if condition if the condition is true you will execute this block right let us say this block is d1 okay and if this is true then let us say it is executing block 2 and if this condition is also false then it comes to condition 3 and if the condition 3 is true then it is let us say block 3 like that you can have any sort of you know else statements okay so here the advantage of having this you know particular statement is when you have multiple conditions and out of which you know that only one condition must be true at any point of time then having this kind of thing instead of uh, going with simple multiple statement this can be rather implemented with simple multiple if also wherein you don't need this else part right you just have to uh, mention if, if condition 1 v1 if condition 2 v2 if condition 2 3 v3 this way also you can implement the same that is said to be the multiple statement but then uh, if the scenario where you have multiple conditions out of which only one condition must be true at any uh, given point of time, if you use this kind of uh, approach, the advantage of having this approach is when the condition is true and the block is executed, the rest of the conditions will never be checked. You will be directly coming on to the next statement, rather, right? When the condition, first condition is false, only then you will be checked the second condition. Okay, and the second condition is true after executing that block, you don't. Uh, even go for the rest of the conditions which you have followed by it rather you just directly come on to the next step right so this way you will be able to save the time from checking the subsequent conditions when you find some particular condition it to be true fine so that way you will be able to save some amount of time but again uh, when let us say for example the scenario where you have multiple conditions may be true then probably this doesn't work rather, right then you can go with multiple if statement okay then coming to first statement. Right. For is uh, you know basically used to execute certain set of instructions for a repeated number of times. We call this as an iterative uh, statement also, right? When you want uh, uh, you know particular set of statements to be executed for a repeated or you know for a number of iterations. So if you look at the syntax of the first statement. Uh, you can find after for followed you have a parenthesis, um, you know, enclosed with two semicolons, rather, right? So before the first colon, semicolon, you find the initialization part. Then uh, between the two semicolons, you find testing condition, right? Then after the second colon, second semicolon, you find increment or decrement. Fine. Then you find some set of statements. Okay. You find some set of statements here. This is it to be the fur block, which you want it to be repeated for a number of times. Then followed by the next statements. Okay. So what happens if you look at the uh, working style of FERT, first the initialization will be done, okay? First the initialization will be done. Then what happens, the condition is going to be tested, right? If the condition is found to be true, then you are allowed to enter into the FERT block, where you're going to execute the FERT block and then you come for the increment or decrement. So once increment or decrement is done, again you go for the testing condition, right? Again, if the condition is true, you will be allowed inside the block and go for the next iteration and come for the increment or decrement and then you test the condition like that. You are going to be, uh, you are going to do this kind of process until the condition is false. When the condition is false, you come on to the next statement. This is if I refer semantics in this fashion, okay. That is how you can see when you are executing for it will get operating in this fashion. Similarly, why? while statement what is the syntax of while you have while condition okay 
we we'll test some condition here inside the build live block and we'll execute it. We will be executing it for one time and then you again come for the condition test. And if the condition is again found to be true, again you download inside. So like like that, you are going to you know execute the while block and then test the condition. Uh, how long until the condition is false? When the condition is false, you will come out to the next state. Right? The same first statement can be implemented with the help of while statement also. Right? Uh, if I am using, uh, let us say, for example, same uh, kind of approach, if I want same kind of approach of, of FERC to be applied on Y, uh, you do initialization process before condition and then before the termination here you can have increment or decrement, right? Then this is transformed, right? This is transformed into FER, means, right? Similar syntax of FER, right? So of course, for and while it can be used for the same kind of purposes, that is to repeat a set of statements for a repeated number of times, rather, right? So in for you can find initialization, testing condition, increment, decrement, all three together in the single sentence. But whereas here we have split it, right? Uh, before the testing condition is done, you are you know, doing the initialization part. So first you initialize the data, the uh, condition is tested, the condition is found to be true, then you will be allowed to inside. Uh, allow consent to go for execution of that particular block and then before the termination you are doing the increment or decrement again you come for the condition testing right so the semantics of the fur is very similar here when i have transformed while with certain other parameters otherwise here initialization increment decrement is optional anyway right but condition testing is must if i do not have condition testing what happens uh, and let us say if uh, I have instead of condition just say one or some value, right? Then if it is found to be true, it uh, falls in an infinite. Basically, um, zero stands for false, and uh, you know one stands for true in uh, C language, right? So instead of condition, if I just put one here, then what happens? It becomes infinite. It means uh, it is going to execute this while block for how long? Infinite. Let us say I have initialization first. I'm going with the same kind of syntax that of the fur. So writing fur equivalent syntax for do by here. So when I'm uh, transforming the first syntax into do by, how I'm going to write in C languages initialization first, do, then you have open place, then you have some set of statements. This set of statement is said to be the block. Okay. Before the termination of the block, you can see here increment or decrement you have. Then termin after terminating the block, you will have while followed by the testing condition rather, right? So here what happens, the initialization will be done first, then you will be allowed immediately inside the block. So you can go for the execution of the entire block and uh, you, if you have increment decrement, yes. As I said, these two are in option. Fine. So after executing this block, where do you come? You'll come for a testing condition here. And if the condition is found to be true, then you will be allowed for the next time to execute the same block. Right? Uh, and then again, the condition tested after you execute that uh, for the next time. Uh, this way, it is going to be repeated in a loop. And how long it is going to be repeated until the condition is false. When the condition is false, you're going to uh, you know, execute the next statements, which are followed by each other. Right? So if you see from the operational semantic point of view, the do while statement of the C language, you can find a small change here. Uh, you know, the condition testing, you are doing it uh, after you execute the block. So that's the reason why this statement is said to be post, you know, condition, post condition statements. Uh, whereas uh, while is a pretest. Uh, for and while both are said to be the pretest statements. Uh, these are said to be the post uh, you know, uh, test, right? Initialization you are doing, then what is that you are executing? Do while you are, right? Then, if you have increment, decrement, it is optional, of course. Then you are testing the condition. So if the condition is found to be true, 
then again you go to the two while block the next time the next iteration after you execute again you will test the condition and again if it is found to be true you again go for the while block to execute for the next time that way you will fall in a loop until the condition is false when the condition is false then you come on to the in brace the control is transferred unconditionally means without checking the condition value, right you don't need to check the condition you can just transfer the control uh, generally the break statement is being used in loops if you want to uh, break the loops uh, you know you can use inside the you know uh, looping statements if i have certain condition to be checked inside the block and upon this condition truthness if i say break this way also i can have right when you encounter with break you directly come out of this particular loop right Similarly, uh, continue. The difference between you know break and continue is break will break the loop and continue will allow you to go for the next iteration by skipping the followed statement. For example, if I have a uh, you know let us say I, I have a small uh, snippet of the code. Let us say. I equal to one. Okay, in this, uh, what would be the output you get? I equal to one, J equal to one initially. So I equal to J is tested, right? Since I is equal to J is equal to both are true, so you'll be allowed inside. Uh, I equal to J is true, then both are the same. Then you say continue. Continue in the sense you have a uh, followed statement uh, to print IJ value, but you don't do this rather, right? When continue encounter, it uh, immediately takes the control uh, to the next iteration, right? So I equal to J, one equal to one, then what happens? The control will be taken here, right? So I will be incremented and J will be incremented, and both will be two. So two equal to two, two less than equal to two less than equal to both are two. Again, so two equal to two is also two. So continue, continue in the sense, it will again go for the next iteration where uh, the condition will be false to come out of the loop. But see, this will not be executed okay i and j values will not be printed okay so what would be the output nothing right no output right you don't get anything right so you have printf to print i and j values but continue is preventing this particular statement from being executed because as and when it encounters it takes a control immediately for the next iteration right so when you do not want certain statements of a uh, you know, particular block. Uh, I don't skip some sort of statements. You can rather use this. Uh, you want to skip certain part of the code also, and allow, uh, and and you want to go for the next iteration. In such cases also, you can probably uh, use this continue statement. Also, what continue does continue will skip the followed statement and go uh, allow for the next iteration to be continued. Okay. Similarly, you have go to statement. Uh, this is, you know, very much widely being used in a commercial programming language. For example, you take uh, COBOL. In COBOL, all looping statements are going to be implemented with the help of GoTo only. And if you take, uh, you know, even uh, for Fortran programming language, in Fortran also, uh, you know, the uh, uh, repetitive statements or iterative statements are being implemented with the help of GoTo only, right? So if you look at the syntax of uh, GoTo, Go to followed by certain label, right? Certain label. Label could be specified before the go to statement, or it could be after the you know, uh, go to statement. This label could be before it, or it could be after it. So when uh, go to statement is encountered, you have go to followed by label. So what happens? The control will be transferred to the perspective level, wherever it could be. Be either after go to or uh, you know before go to that, right? So whatever the statements that are followed by you know, you know uh, low level, you know this level, they are going to be rather executed. Okay. So having this to go to always takes a control from one place to another, uh, and switching between the you know uh, uh, statements within the same program or uh, parts of the program. What happens? You need to uh, 
store the status of the particular program till that point uh, with all the processor registers being loaded uh, by deloading the you know, existing one existing current uh, status the current status have to be rather uh, pushed onto the stack okay uh, and then the uh, you know current current status after having pushed onto the stack new status which is going to be you know uh, uh, pushed onto the registers generally in uh, uh, C language, the process registers that you have, like stack segment, uh, data segment, code segment, environment segment, and all. So these uh, registers, they have to be rather loaded with, you know, uh, new status. Fine. And again, when you return from this uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, statement back to another, then this, uh, you know, registers have to be deloaded uh, and then loaded with the uh, state where you are, rather, right? So, uh, deloading and leading will always, uh, you know, uh, cause us an extra overhead. There's a reason why in C language, uh, they're trying to remove this go to state completely, uh, and they have been replaced with the for while do I, which are doing quite handy, uh, you know, for iterative uh, purposes. But then at the same time, uh, since this, then you have uh, the block started. Uh, And inside this block, you can have any number of cases. Case one, you should, you should have a space in between. This is all part of the syntax, right? Syntax, as you said, the set of rules which Google's within the sentence is well formed or not, right? So you need to be, uh, you need to specify the statements as per the syntax. Otherwise, uh, you know, it immediately results in error. Uh, you, if you combine this, you find another, right? There is a space in between. Case followed by space, and then one you have to call it. Then you can have some sort of statements. Uh, let's say, let us say, for example, block one, and uh, you need to have a break statement after every block specified for every case, rather, right? So then you can have case two, case two colon followed by some sort of statement, which I'm saying is block two. Then uh, I say break. Then I can have another case, case three, and some sort of statement which is going to block three. Then I can have break. Like this, I can have any number of cases. Uh, then finally, I will have the default, right? Default, colon, then you have such a statement. Then switch is ended, then you have next statements followed by the same, right? So if you look at the semantic point of view, this is the operation two. You said black one is executed. Then you don't uh, check the rest of the condition. Then you directly come out to the next statement. Right, very similar. You can see here in switch case as well. Okay, when this expression is being evaluated, okay, this expression must have to be evaluated before the switch you enter. Uh, then the evaluate expression value will be checked across this. This is one is nothing but expression value one. Okay, so after the expression being evaluated, the value which you obtain. Which is going to be checked across its respective cases. At each case, you can see in each case you find some expression values, uh, which are going to be rather now uh, compared with the expression that you have evaluated before you enter into the state. So the evaluated value, if it matched with the first case expression value one, then block one is going to be executed. Then you have break. What do you mean by break? After executing this, you will have to come out of this particular block. Whenever you have a break statement, it simply breaks that particular uh, block and then uh, let the control to, uh, you know, be placed on the next statement, right? It will uh, take the control to the next statement. If I do not have, let us say, break, what happens? After you execute the block one, uh, you execute the block two as well. If I do not have break at every case, the uh, scenario, what I am going to get is, I'll, if say for example, expression uh, after being, uh, you know, uh, evaluated, when you get uh, checked across these respective cases and the first one get matched, then what happens after it executes the block one, block two, block three also will be executed. All such blocks, whichever you have been, until the default, all will be executed. But I don't want this. I want the operational semantics of this to be of, of which kind? If else if kind, right? Because it's an advancement of if else if, right? So wherein when the expression value after being evaluated, when it get uh, you know compared with uh, against these cases, the first one when we get matched, 
it has to execute only block one. It means it should skip all this. It does not execute all this, right? After executing block one, where it should go, it should go to the next statement. So this is possible only when I have the break statement. So every case statement is terminated with the break statement, right? If the expression value, which has been obtained after the you know expression is evaluated, is not matched with expression value one, then it compares with expression value two. If it gets matched, then block two will be executed. Then break means you come on to the next statement. If uh, uh, both of them uh, did not get matched, then expression value three will be compared, and if matched, then block three will be executed. Then <coughs> you will come on to the next statement. Like this, if the expression value which is been evaluated does not get matched across any of these cases, then default will be executed. Right? So default must be before the end of the switch. Right? This is how the semantics you need to specify. Right? Uh, this is how the semantics is specified by Lambda designer. So you need to have as per that particular semantic only. I cannot have default in between, or I cannot have default before itself. Right? Default must be always before the end of the uh, you know block. And when none of this explain because the uh, comparison will start from the first case on your start, right? So uh, if none of the cases get matched, only then default is going to be executed. If I have default as a thing, what happens? Every time default is going to be executed, right? So the syntax and the semantics that has uh, been you know designed by the language designer, we need to keep in mind based on that only we need to specify our statement in order to get our respective. Uh, task to be executed with the help of the programming person that are being offered by the language designer. Okay, so I hope it is clear. So these are all the control statements that you have studied as part of the C language, right? Which are all set to be the control statements. Why we say all this set to be the control statement? Because upon either condition truthness or without having checked the condition, rather what exactly these statements are doing you? It is uh, taking the control, right? It is taking the control and uh, moving the control the other way around. I can say it is transferring the control from one place to another uh, place, right? With the help of these statements, you can rather have the uh, you know uh, transfer of control within the program, uh, fine, from one place to another place, right? Uh, That's the reason why we say this, uh, this uh, program, uh, this particular program is uh, finding the sum of an array. Here uh, you have uh, an array specified uh, five elements, and then this finding actually product of an array, right? So you have taken a product variable which is initialized with one, and then uh, the array elements are being read inside the for loop. So immediately after the element being read, it's uh, being multiplied with the product, right? So you are accumulating the product of all the elements that you have read in the product variable, and when you come out of this particular loop, you are printing the result, right? Fine. So you can see here how the you know, for loop is being executed. Uh, for i equal to zero, right? The part is going to be done, right? As per the semantic of the for first initialization part is done, i equal to zero. You have an array of five you said so a of five for a memory will be allocated for about five elements. All of them are integers. So you can access these elements with the help of indexing mechanism starting with index value zero, a of zero, a of one, a of two, a of three, and a of four, right? So here you have a variable product. Product is initialized to one first. So enter the array elements. We just execute the program and see. Yeah, because it's uh, using connection from the server. Fine. Um, so what happens uh, when it gets executed? Uh, first, enter the array elements will be printed. Where now? Uh, you know this particular first statement is going to be executed. So in first time, first initialization part is done. That is i equal to zero, right? So i equal to zero is done first. 
then i less than 5 0 less than 5 is true so you will be allowed inside then scanf statement you have what the scanf statement does it will uh, Willing, it is willing to accept a value. Since you have a percentage D for specify inside the double quote, it is willing to accept the integer value. Fine. So when you give some value, let us say for example 5, okay, then what happens? This 5 value will be placed in A of 0. The ampersand is the address operator. How do you read the values through scanner with the help of address operator, right? You give first the form specify inside the double quote, followed by then you give the address of the variables into which you want this particular value that you are read, that you are reading in to be placed in bundle, right? So let us say, for example, 5 we have read. So this 5, when you want to place it in, yes, yes. so that is going to be placed. Now, after the scan statement, you have another statement product into equal to. This is a shortcut operator, right? When you have um, into equal to, how do you interpret this? Product equal to product into A of 5. So product is 1 here, 1 into A of 5, A of 0, that is 5. 1 into 5 is going to be 5, right? So that will be placed in 5, uh, product. So product value becomes 5, right? So after this, where do you go? Uh, you go for the incrementation. Right? This is what the semantic of for us rather, right? So initialization will be done only for the first time. After that, what happens? The condition is going to be tested. If the condition is found to be true, you will be already inside the loop after executing this particular statement of the test block. The increment, you go for increment. So the i value will be incremented to 1. And now after incrementation, again, the condition is going to be tested. 1 less than 5 is going to be check which is again found to be true then you'll be again allowed inside the block then where you're going to accept another value uh, you know when the new value which is let us for example being accepted with 10 now we'll be placed it where a of 1 a, uh, because i value is 1 here so a of 1 so 10 here right then after that you have next statement to be uh, executed is product equal to product into a of i so product is already 5 5 into a of i is nothing but a of 1 which is nothing but 10. So this is going to be 50. So now product value will be 50. So after this again, where do you go? You go for the incrementation of the same. So i value will be incremented to 2. Then again, condition will be tested. And this is going to be repeated. How long until the condition is false? Right. So since the array size is 5, so it will allow you to go for 5 elements being accepted from the keyboard. And then the same will be, you know, multiplied. Uh, and accumulated into the product and you get the you know accumulated product of those five values in the product variable. So with the help of product when you are trying to print you will get the result out of it right. So um, you can see the semantic of the fur uh, you know this is how it's going to be executed right. So probably we'll see in the next class with uh, you know, few more examples by uh, taking other you know conditional statements as well. I think uh, we can stop here uh, for now. If you have any doubts, you can probably raise.